with Dallas and St. Louis. You know, Dallas, you know, they keep reliving um, the last time they won a Stanley Cup, and that was back in 1999 with Brett Hull against the Buffalo Sabres. You know, so they've been wanting it forever. But then again, you know, like I said, the St. Louis Blues have been in the playoffs multiple times, and they've had great teams offensive, defensive-wise, like, and so on and so forth. They've had great players and great teams. But for some reason, they just not can't get past this hump. And I don't know if they're going to be able to do it against these Dallas Stars, especially, you know, if Ben Bishop, their goalie, is hot. And then, you know, like I said, Tyler Sagan and Jamie Ben, those are the guys to keep out for. And, of course, they have a great mix of senior guys and, and, and rookies that can make them last. So, ah, man, I'm going to have to go with the Dallas Stars going in the Western Conference Finals over the St. Louis Blues. All right. So, uh... You want to go on to the next next series in the West? Oh, yeah. I love this series. It's going to be so great. So we got the last place seed, the Colorado Avalanche versus the San Jose Sharks, and that should definitely be another series to watch. Uh, the Colorado Avalanche completely stunned all of us, including the NHL, beating the first place in the Western Conference, Calgary Flames, in five games, no problem. Like I said, they got that, that Hopi Baker award winker Kale Maker, unbelievable player. He's already on the power power play. Um, he can definitely do some damage. And, you know, Colorado's definitely hungry uh, for another Stanley Cup. But then again, like I said, the San Jose Sharks, you know, I think their biggest opponent in these playoffs would have been the Las Vegas Golden Knights, and they barely got past them. But I think after that, I think San Jose is going to realize, all right, we beat probably one of the better teams in the Western Conference. I think they can go all the way. So uh, with that being said, hopefully Pavelski gets better um, after his injury, and I think uh, they'll be ready to step up to the plate, and I think uh, the Colorado Avalanche have too much on their plate. I think San Jose is going to move on to the next round. So right now, my pick for the Western Conference Finals is the Dallas Stars and the San Jose Sharks. All righty. Let's move it on to the East. East. I don't even know where to start with this. If you told me that the Carolina Hurricanes and the New York Islanders were going to meet in the second round, I would have said you're full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I, I, I never expected it. But like I said, I, I, I didn't take uh, the Carolina Hurricanes for uh, – I didn't take them for real. I, you know, they, they, they were in the playoffs, and, you know, they had the face of the defending Stanley Cup champions. You know, they had a lot of firepower, especially with Alexander Ovechkin, Nicholas Backstrom. But uh, they lost T.J. Oshie in the Game 7. I think that really made a difference. And, you know, it, it's too late now. Carolina moved on to the next round. And then with uh, the Islanders sweeping the Pittsburgh Penguins, you know, defeating Sid the Kid, Phil Kessel, Guinea Malk, and so on and so forth, you know, they have a lot to prove as well. And uh, both teams have won a Stanley Cup. Most recently, the Carolina Hurricanes in 2006. The Islanders have not won a Stanley Cup since 1983. And uh, ever since that big trade when they traded their captain, John Travera, to the Toronto Maple Leafs, I think a lot of people didn't take him as serious. So I'm super stoked for this series. I honestly can't tell you who's going to win this. Uh, I feel like it's going to be a shootout. I feel like it's going to be who is uh, going to score the last goal. Um, but I guess when push comes to shove, ooh, I'm going to have to go ahead and say the Carolina Hurricanes. If it goes to a Game 7, if it goes to more than five games, which I'm sure it will, and more importantly, if it goes to Game 7, like I said, Justin Williams has a great stat for him to have him on your team when he is 7-1 in Game 7. So I feel like the Carolina Hurricanes actually might beat the New York Islanders to go to the Eastern Conference Final. Hey, man, it'd be pretty fun to see Justin Williams come through again. Uh, if uh, Game 7 comes around, you can definitely bet I'll be watching. What a beauty. God, I love that man. <laughs> All right, so we'll go. We'll go to the, uh, the 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 other series that we have between the Columbus Blue Jackets and uh, the Boston Bruins. They're so good. Uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets blew everyone out of the water by beating the President's Trophy, uh, Tampa Bay, in four games. As the first time a wild card team has beaten a President's Trophy team in the playoffs by a sweep. So they're already making new records. Uh, the Boston Bruins, they have four straight solid lines. 
Uh, you know, again, I'm more worried about my buddy Tuka Rask in net. He's a great goalie, but um, he is 10 and 9 when coming to games that are very important in the playoffs. It's more importantly in overtime games. And I don't know if that's a really good statistic to have. While on the other hand, the Columbus Blue Jackets have Sergei Bobrovsky, great goalie. Like I said, you know, in the middle of the season, Columbus was thinking about trading half of their star players, including Bobrovsky. And uh, they decided to stick it out, and they got some key players, including with Matthew Shane. And so I think Matthew Shane and Bravosky want to prove something to the rest of the NHL to say that, hey, we're out here and we need business. So I think that will be a very, very cool uh, series to watch. Now, Nick, tell me, as a Bruins fan, you know, watching, watching the Blue Jackets come in here and basically blow everybody's minds uh, taking Tampa Bay out in the first round by sweep, are you a little little scared, a little nervous, a little worried for, for your Boston team? Uh, yeah. I mean, like I said, like I've, I've said everything I thought I knew about, about the game of hockey. And, you know, I, I, I had my bracket set up ready to go. I had Tampa Bay going all the way to the, to the Stanley Cup. And, you know, they completely proved me wrong. I didn't take them serious enough. And that's, that's, uh, that's a fault on my fault. So for all my uh, Columbus Blue Jacket fans out there, I am sorry. I am paying attention. I am listening. And you are a very good, good team. And uh, I, I, like, like you said, as, as a Bruins fan, I am, I am I'm shaking in my boots. I'm shaking my boots a little bit. But uh, we'll, we'll see um, how this series works out. Now, I do have a really crazy statistic that I heard actually on ESPN, which is actually shocking because, you know, they never really do hockey. Let's hear it. Um, so apparently, in after the year 2000, every team, when a team comes from uh, Game 7 facing a team that swept, all teams that ended up going to Game 7 ended up beating the other team that swept the previous team for nothing. Hey, it might come down to, uh, you know, they're coming off basically – two weeks straight of playing whereas the other team you know they had a long break in between they might be a little a little slower on the, on, the, on the gameplay yeah i know and it's 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 absolutely unbelievable just for the fact that you know uh these players are playing every day for two and a half months straight and there's going to be injuries there's going to be mistakes people are going to get injured and make mistakes and so on and so forth so i me personally i think the person who would a team that would sweep um, would be better and well rested. But apparently, according to the stats, if you just keep on playing, you'll be fine. And it's just a it's just a crazy stat to think about because you know these people are going in day in and day out. You know they only have a a, a a day in between games, and then you would have two days when you're traveling, so you can have a practice day and a travel day. But even then, they're on the ice for long periods of time you know and then you're, they're giving 110 percent not that they weren't in the regular season but you know they're working their asses off and for the fact that the players that keep on trucking end up doing better than the players that don't it's just a really uh surprising statistic for me yeah you know i'm 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 excited to watch this series um i'm still gonna go with you i'm st- i'm i'm gonna root for the bruins in the east I'm going to brute for probably San Jose in the West um, just because I want to see your guy, Joe Thornton. Jumbo Joe. You know, Jumbo Joe, let's get him to the Stanley Cup. Oh, man, if that would be a series of Boston Bruins versus the San Jose Sharks in the Stanley Cup, I don't know what to do. I, I, I would literally <laughs> – I, I have no idea what to do. I love my Boston Bruins, but at the same time, Jumbo Joe worked so hard for us in those long times when he was with Boston – and like I said, he's a man that's blood, sweat, and tears in the sport of hockey. If there's anybody else that deserves it, it's definitely Jumbo Joe. Well, I love it. We'll be rooting for him. I got one statistics I want to end with you um, before we before we sign off for the night. Go for um, it. Basically, I looked up the most ridiculous statistics in NHL history, and Ooh, this one is, is you know, this. This article has 13, but I'm just going to focus on this one. Uh, most time spent in his equipment 
after winning the Stanley Cup. Oh no! <laughs> I heard it was. Uh, I heard it was a couple days. I heard it was from. God, who was that? Can you please tell me? I'm dying to know because I I've heard this story before, and I can't remember who it was. All right, so it was a total of 25 hours. Uh, he wanted to match his jersey number number um, after the Colorado Avalanche won the Stanley Cup in 2001. Do you have a guess off that roster? I know you got some names in your head. Well, I know, I know it wasn't Ray Bork. I hope it wasn't Ray Bork. I mean, he was he was a long time Boston player, and if the people don't know the story about that, you know, he played for Boston for more than 20 seasons. He had a few more seasons left. He went over the Colorado, and eventually he won that Stanley Cup with the Colorado Avalanche. Um, it was not him. Not a, it wasn't him? No. Oh, Jersey number 25. <laughs> Jersey That's 25. 25 hours. Um, there's there's a lot of big names, a lot of Hall of Famers on that team. There was Adam Foote. Uh, there was Forsberg. There was Sackett. There was Roy. Did I already say Foote? I already said Foote. Ah, um, oh, man. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm probably going to butcher his name. Okay, go for it. But I'm assuming Sean Poden? Sean Poden? S-H-J-O-N-P-O-D-E-I-N. Are you, are you saying that right? <laughs> I, probably not. Let's see. What, what's it? Sean Poden? S H J. O N, that's how you spell his first name. I'm gonna assume it's Sean. Shajon, Shajon, Shajon. <laughs> Poden. P O D E I N. You tell me how to say it, and I'll be impressed. Oh Jesus, I don't even know. But that guy, hats off to him for spending 25 hours in his equipment after winning. I don't know if I'll be able to do it. You know how disgusting, like, gear is? And especially, you know, then after you win the Stanley Cup and then you're pouring in, like, champagne and beer and uh, so on and so forth. Holy crap. I'm sure. That's insane. I'm sure it's disgusting. No, that's that's awful. That's, like, no, I'm not about that at all. <laughs> you know, I know my, no. my sister growing up, she played soccer and she was a goalie. And she would torture us, you know, me and my other brother, my brother. Uh, she would torture us by shoving her goalie gloves in our in our face, and they smelled absolutely terrible. I can only imagine what an NHL level uh, hockey player's equipment smells like. Well, I mean, you know, you know, hockey players are extremely superstitious. There's times where they won't wear, they won't wash their gear or change their socks or so on and so forth. Here's another weird thing: uh, Sidney Crosby. I know this is probably gross for our, for our listeners here. I uh, hope you're not eating. That apparently Sidney Crosby wears the same jock strap he's been wearing since juniors. So he's been wearing the same jock strap for 15 years. Wow. That is unnecessary, sir. It's the only kind of statistics we like here at Jock Strap Sports. <laughs> I know. Strap Wait, I totally just realized that. That's absolutely great. I'm so happy. You know what? I'm happy. I, I I'm happy. I explained that for the rest of our Jock Strap uh, fans out there. That is absolutely great. You know, I'm, I'm really excited you brought that up as well. It's the first <laughs> first correlation we've brought to Jockstrap Sports about an actual Jockstrap. You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> and with that, guys, we'll end this episode. Catch us next time. We'll be doing an episode a week, um, kind of highlighting the, the first part of the second round, I guess. We'll probably be a few, few games in for each game or for each uh, series. So catch us back next week. Nick. Thanks for coming on. We'll talk to you Always soon, bud. Always a pleasure, brother.